This is a real interview I had with a big bank here in the Netherlands for a senior Android developer position. And I remember all of the questions almost. This was the kind of interview where uh, the questions are kind of straightforward, but they're the type that you don't really think about every day. You'll see what I mean when we start. Yes, I changed my office uh, layout again. Sue me. I have to. Let's start. First question was, what is Android? So I said, uh, yeah, Android is an operating system. It's based on Linux. The kernel is Linux. It gets the security features from Linux. It was started by some startup uh, somewhere before 2008. Google bought it. Uh, 2008 was the first version that came out. And I remember this because of uh, YouTube keeps suggesting that video of uh, the very first Android uh, operating system. The, the date was 2008. That's where I remember that from. What's the latest version of Android? Ouch. You know, I mean, you're, you're, you're an Android developer, right? Reality check, right? What day is it? What year are we in? What planet are we on? Are you here? <laughs> What's the latest version? I mean, you should know, right? You write for the latest version, you stay up to date. I said 23. Mm. Then I said, no, sorry, that's the minimum SDK version. The latest version is 30. No, it's not. It's 34. All right, no problem. That's okay. Moving on. What is Dalvik? And what is ART and what, what is the difference between them? Okay. I have some idea here. So I said Dalvik and ART are runtimes. They're, uh, the, the Java virtual machine. It's where your code runs, right? And what's the difference between them? What did art bring that Dalvik didn't have? Hmm. I said just in time compilation. It's wrong. Art brought ahead of time compilation. Dalvik was just in time. Art is ahead of time. He didn't correct me. They didn't correct me as we we're talking. Now I am correcting it because they just say, okay, cool. Next. How do you secure a user's private information? Let's say it, the, their pin, right? So you have an Android app and it's a banking app, just like these people have. And you have a pin that you choose from within the app to, you know, use in your credit card as well. You're going to use it in real life. It's not just your pin on the, on the mobile app, right? So this is pretty, pretty sensitive information. How would you store this information and others like it, like the user's profile, secret question, stuff like this. So in this situation, I knew that this interview would involve security questions. So I studied for it and I even made a document, which I'll share with you, uh, maybe in a video or in this video's uh, description, it includes everything. But so I studied this stuff, but I didn't really connect the dots. I was never asked about where each piece of information fit in the real world. Right? So I had bits and bobs here and there. So I first thing came in my mind, I said, you hash it. Mm, okay. If you hash it, what happens then? then where, where do you store this hash then? Okay. And then eventually I said, you use encrypted shared preferences. This is from the stuff I studied encrypted shared preferences, or you have an encrypted file and uh, maybe you, you encrypt it and store the key in the key store. Okay. Here they nodded a little like, <laughs> right. Next one. How do you communicate securely to a server from your Android application? So you are talking to a server, you're making requests, you're doing what you do in an app. How do you do this securely? Because it's a bank, you know? Uh, so I said, yeah, you use TLS, you know, HTTPS. It's going to be secure. No one's going to be able to encrypt that stuff. You know, then the follow up question was, how do you stop then a man in the middle attack? 
meaning you are here and the server is here and someone goes in the middle and starts to repeat to you the bytes that are usually coming from the server. So you say, okay, it looks like the server to me because this is what I'm expecting them to return because you know, you don't know if, if it's the server or someone else that's returning. You're only checking for the bytes, whether they're the same or what you expect or not. So someone, a man, can <laughs> go in the middle of that communication and, uh, you know, repeat back to you what you want to hear. And you're going like, yeah, and they take your shit, you know, they take your data, supposedly. So how do you stop that? What I said, because... Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know much beyond HTTPS, but eventually the, the conversation went to, oh, you do certificate pinning. Okay. But I had read previously when I was studying for Android security that certificate pinning was not recommended to be done, right? And a friend of mine, I was talking to a friend of mine who knows this stuff, and he said, yeah, I have another solution for that. Since certificate pinning is not recommended, you use two certificates. So I went and told them that, right? But I wasn't able to defend it very much because it wasn't my idea. <laughs> I just heard it. I just overheard it. So that was that question. That was the end of that question. Next one. Now the, the Android actual coding stuff started. So he says, what is the difference between shared flow and state flow? So I remember studying this from recommended Android architecture uh, document, which I'm also in the process of making a document about that to share with you and just to keep it for future reference. It's, it'll be like a, like a summary of all the babbling that Google does. So what's the difference between shared flow and state flow? So I say, uh, state flow uh, is the one I use, and I remember not, uh, not not wanting to use shared flow because it's not recommended or something like that. That's literally what I said. No, I said in the beginning, I said state flow. Yeah, you can specify where you want it to subscribe uh, to start emitting items, and it's it's lifecycle dependent. You can have it be lifecycle dependent. You can have it so uh, only when it's on resume does this start emitting stuff. So he said. Uh, if you don't use shared flow, state flow is a shared flow. It's a, it's an inter it's a it's a subclass of it. So how do you not use shared flow? You're already using it. I go, oh yeah, I didn't know that. So it turns out difference is he told me shared flow is always emitting stuff. State flow is, uh, you know, is is dependent on on state. You know, duh. See, there's the document. There's the entire document about this stuff. Uh, state flow, shared flow that Google has, and you could read all about the differences here, you know, but I didn't because, <laughs> you know, I didn't expect that. Anywho, moving on. All right. Uh, use threading, right? Yes. Um, so use coroutines or Rx Java. Why? I said uh, I know Rx Java a lot. That's the bulk of my uh, experience with Rx Java, but lately I've been using coroutines. And uh, he says why? Well, because uh, it's much simpler. Honestly, it looks simpler. It's easier to implement, easier to understand. Rx Java can get really complicated. You know those big chains where it's like continue and then and then. You could get like a whole chain as big as this paragraph of just one operation that just has so many folds inside of it. Coroutines, I believe, does this easier. Okay. Question after that. Since you use coroutines, how long have you used it? I say seven months, about that seven months. Have you ever used channels? I say no, because I haven't. So there was a follow up question to this one, but I don't and have not used channels. So that's out of the window. Next. Suppose you have the following code. What's it going to print? Mm. So he shows you this code on his machine. Um, so you got here a run blocking section, which inside of it has this measure time in milliseconds. And it's going to delay once, delay twice, and then print out the duration that this whole 
block took to execute and then it's going to print done. So what's going to run first? What's going to be the output, right? So this function is simply a delay and this function is simply a delay. So here I start looking at it. Yeah. Okay. Run blocking. Um, yeah, since you're in run blocking, this is going to block the UI thread, right? It's not going to do anything until it finishes this stuff because of run blocking. So that, that they, you showed this one and one after that similar to it, right? Together. I start going back between the two and say, okay, this one is going to print total time taken is a thousand plus 500, let's say 1.5 seconds, uh, 1,500 milliseconds, and then it's going to print done. Great. Okay. What's this next one going to print here? You have the same thing, but they are async calls. Mm -hmm. Same run blocking, same run blocking here, but inside it's async and then it calls a wait on them. Okay. Same thing prints the result then done. Nothing changes here. Same suspend, whatever. So here I'm, I got tripped up. So I, I look at async. I think, yeah, it's async. So it's probably going to escape the run blocking, have another thread. Right. So it's gonna, it's gonna go off and, and then run blocking will finish. It's going to print done. And then after 1.5 seconds, it's going to print total time taken because there's mu there must be a trick here, right? Because I mean, they can't, pr they can't print the same thing, you know, <laughs> must be a trick or something. Cause I know run blocking is going to block everything. I mean, it says in the name, right? But this async thing. Okay. See, if you know this by heart, there would no, no there wouldn't be a trick anywhere. You know, these tricks or, or uh, when you get tripped up, it's when you're not a hundred percent sure. And this stuff will expose that if you have it. So anyway, I say, yeah, it's going to print done first, and then it's going to go here and do total time taken is 1.5 milliseconds. Sure. Sure. Let's run it. Runs it. No, they both print total time taken 1.5 seconds and then done both of them. Async or no async this run blocking blocks the entire universe. There is no such thing as it goes out onto another thread and there's nothing run blocking means it blocks everything until this whole thing finishes. Okay. <laughs> After suppose you have the following code and you want to add caching error handling and data handling. This is not the same code exactly as he showed, but he showed something much simpler and I knew it was the data layer. Well, he, he also mentioned like, suppose you receive this request, uh, response, uh, in the, in the data layer, right? It says request here, but it should be response in the data layer. And you want to forward the response to the domain layer, to the use cases, or just directly to the UI, uh, and listen to any errors, cache it, and, uh, just show the result if it's successful. So what I say here is, okay, first of I, I would have a sealed class that would represent, uh, those, uh, those types of responses. So I would model the response, how that looks like. And I would model the error, how it, how it should look like. And then the caching, well, I would have a database handler here. And if the response already matches my successful response. I go to the database and check if it's there. If it is, I just, and it's not stale and it's not stale. I mean, if it is stale, I update it. If it's not, I just return what I got from the database, something like that. Right. And if it is matching the model for error, I just forward the error to the UI success. I forward the success to the UI based on my model. Okay. That's it. Okay. <laughs> not like, Oh, what about uh, No, just, okay. Next one. Suppose you have the following code. Where's the view model? Where's the model and where's the view? So they had this entire page, very similar to this, a little more uh, complicated than this, just a little more. 
this is the activity and this is your view model so point out the model here right and point out the view model point out the view so obviously this is the view right and this is the view model okay what about the model so i say here they had the username and and the first name or something like that and they had listeners for both here in the view model and the view was listening to any updates for those two fields so i say yeah this is the model this should be the model is what i said this should be the model it should not be floating around like this it should be probably a class that has count and a username and first name and that's what you update that is your model right to this day not to this day and it sounds like a year ago this happened uh, basically last week the interview happened uh to now I, i'm still unsure of what he meant honestly eventually turns out there is no model here and i quickly said yeah yeah because this should be the model there is no model right now but this is what would make up the model and that was that for for that question that was my answer nothing after that that was that concluded the entire interview oh they also asked stuff like uh how comfortable would you be training other uh, less senior people so i say yeah i would be very comfortable i have a youtube channel i like teaching i like mentoring when i get the chance makes me understand something more that's uh, that's what i think another question was uh if you were a senior person at the company and we task you with building an application along with two other junior developers and you need to finish this application in six months, let's say. All right. So Mr. Big Guy now. Uh, I say, all right. Well, how would you distribute the work? How would you plan it out? What would you do? So I don't say this, but I've not uh, done this before. So I start to imagine, okay, what is a junior Android developer going to help me with? Hmm. Well, in my mind, I would just task them with implementing single activities, right? That's what I said. So I would task them with implementing single activities like views. Hey, there's this screen. Go do this screen, the entire thing, along with the connection to the view model, along with the connection to the database, all of that. But because I don't think it's going to be as easy as I make it sound now. I would suppose that this, they would have to wait for me to do all the plumbing first. So I would have to set up the data layer. All I would give these juniors is, Hey, go do this screen. This is how you handle the DB. You get this reference, inject this DB handler, inject this view model, inject this repository, and you're good to go for this screen. So for them to reach that stage, to have that stuff available in the project, I would need a couple of like maybe one or, or one and a half months, and then they could join and, and start working on it. Because uh, in reality, I, what I think is that I wouldn't uh, task them with doing that stuff because they're juniors, you know? So this is literally what I said, all of it. I am telling you verbatim what I said. They said, okay, great. We'll see you later. I said, okay, great. I'll see you later. And we enjoyed each other. We said, bye. Next day, see you. Rejected. No, don't like it. So <laughs> that was the outcome of that interview. But in all honesty, I really enjoyed this interview. Uh, it, it was a reality check, like I said, specifically this question. Where are we now, Odai? <laughs> right? Hello checking in are you here this one really caught me off guard and uh, i i found it really interesting and challenging but yeah wasn't meant to be how do you think uh, you would have fared in such an interview let me know in the comments and uh yeah see you in the next one Bye bye <laughs>